So, today let us uh, discuss uh, on the next session on vocabulary. See, the moment what I have written here in my class today is vocabulary. Uh, with respect to this, a similar class we had earlier in the other session as well, which you remember it very well, isn't it? So, here I am with my class number 23 and uh, 23, yes. Uh, so, in this class, we will be discussing more about a vocabulary exercise. So, before I could start about what am I going to discuss today, first of all, you got to understand or you got to, uh, what can I say, uh, you got to, uh, you know, think of what exactly we did in the first class on the vocabulary exercise after the chapter that we did on, which one? Oromanusian, isn't it? So, after Oromanusian, I had taken one, one session on the vocabulary where I have told you that do you really think that vocabulary is very important, right? So, what is vocabulary? Vocabulary is nothing but the art of playing with the word <coughs> or the words, isn't it? Many at a times at the time of communication, we come across these words which are either belonging to the three different categories of the word which I have already discussed with you. So, if you remember, what are those three categories of the word that can be divided or that can be, uh, you know, categorized into the first word that we did in the first session on vocabulary was antonyms and synonyms, isn't it? Remember, so you should be knowing like, you know, what is an antonym and what is a synonym. In the similar way, Today, we will be discussing the other part of the word, but before that, let us understand, let us come to know like what is vocabulary and do you really think that vocabulary is very, very important, right? So, when we talk here about vocabulary, we can broadly or with the word that is given to us, we can identify or classify that word into three different categories of the word form. Now, the first word form that I have discussed with you people is the antonyms and the synonyms. So, you know it very well by now that what are antonyms and what are synonyms in English, okay. Anto, opposite, syno, same. So, you will have to know this what exactly do they mean and you should be knowing the definition and you should also be knowing how can you give the antonym part of a word or how can you think of a synonym to a similar word that will be given to you. Isn't it? So, in the similar way, now the second category that we discussed in the last session was affixes in English. Now, what are these affixes in English? Affixes in English are nothing but the prefix part and the suffix part of the word. While we were discussing something on the prefixes part, I am sorry, uh, the antonym part, I had very clearly told you that when you are changing a meaning of a word into its prefix form or something, directly or indirectly you are also giving me the antonym part of that specific word. What is the example that I gave you? For example, if you have satisfy as a verb, satisfy as a verb, what is the antonym part of the word satisfy? Dissatisfy is what you will say, antonym part of that word, isn't it? In a similar way, if I have to ask you what is the prefix form of the word, even dis word that you add before the word starts is also an antonym. At the same way, you can also say I am unsatisfied. So, you are going to use these two words dis or un at the beginning of the word which means that you are actually doing the antonym part. When you are doing the antonym part at the same time you are also doing the prefix part or something ok. I am yet to come to the concept on prefixes and suffixes that we will do it later. But uh, this chapter that we have completed in the last class was, what is that that we completed? The world's youngest headmaster. What is that uh, chapter that we completed? Yes, we did complete Babar Ali by Samarpita Mukherjee Sharma, where we have discussed about the way that he made his school a tremendous one in terms of providing the education. So, I am not going to you know talk more about that, but uh, this particular uh, class in the last class when after the chapter discussion we also had a question and answers relating to that. So, we did comprehension questions and comprehension 2 and comprehension 3 questions right and uh, Today on the same chapter you have been given a glimpse of to understand what do you mean by 
homophones and homonyms in English. Okay, so when we talk about homophones or homonyms, it is only the spelling and the sound that comes when we pronounce the words. All right, so today we are giving or we are discussing on the third aspect or the third category of the word form that is homonyms and homophones. I am sure if you look into the text that has been given there about the small or the brief exercises on the homophones and homonyms, you will understand what exactly are we talking about or what are we going to talk to you about. Okay. Now, for example, if I have to talk to you something about a word like, you know, <clears throat> If I have to give you a word like uh, right, okay, W R I T E. So, what is the word form here, or what exactly is this the part of speech of this word right? Is right is nothing but a verb. It's it's an act, action word, isn't it? So, the same word. How do you think you can write it in other different forms? The same word, how do you think that you can write it in two different forms or three or four or whatsoever. So far, whatever you have heard on this word is something that we will take into consideration. See, write, correct, then we also have RIT, heard of this word and then we also can say <coughs> w R I G H T. Now, the same word which is pronounced. Now, what is most common thing that you can find out here out of these four words? The pronunciation, isn't it? Is there any change in the word or the voice that you make or the sound that you make in order to pronounce these words? Right, 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 and right. So, what is common here? The pronunciation, the sound, isn't it? The sound is same but uh, do you have the same spellings here not at all do you think that all four words mean the same no right so all these fours which are pronounced in the same way but can be used in different contexts because they differ in their meanings at the same time they differ in their spellings and what are these words in english are called as <coughs> so what are these words in english are called as <coughs> they are called as homophones homo means what same phone phone is nothing but sound a word which is pronounced in a same way but used into all different contexts because they differ in their spellings at the same time they differ in their meanings getting now for example if i have to give you one more word S I T E sight then C I T E sight then S I G H T. So, what do you think is common here? There are three words that are being written on the board here, and what is the common thing here? Unlike the other other word, so you have sight, you have sight, and then you have sight. That is again a pronunciation is very very um, the, sorry the pronunciation is same. Is there a difference in the spelling? Yes. Is there a difference in the meaning? Yes. So what are these words called as? So they are called as homophones. So what I mean to tell you here is that so they are called as homophones in English. <coughs> okay. So a word which has the same pronunciation sound okay but with a difference in the spellings as well as difference in the meaning are called as what homophones okay so to give you one more example pole pole in this similar way you can think of so many words that we come across whether you read them, whether you write them, whether you listen to them, okay, whether you speak, we make use of the words depending on the context and hence 
we are doing an exercise on the vocabulary. <coughs> Clear? Okay. Now, we are doing the homophones part of the word here. Is the concept clear now? A word which can be pronounced or which can be spoken in a same, pronounced in a same word, um, uh, sound, same sound, <coughs> but the words are different or the words can be used or they have to be used in a different context and at the same time their spelling also differs. But only one thing in common in all these words that are there on the board is the sound, is the pronunciation. So, such words in English are called as homophones. I hope the concept is clear now. Now, let us go in deep into the words or their meanings here. When you say WRITE, it is nothing but the act of writing. <clears throat> I write letters, I write my notes, I wrote exam, isn't it? This right. RIGHT. You are right in what you are saying. So, which word are you going to choose here? You are right in your decision. You made a right choice. Okay, you made a right choice. And for example, if you are in Bangalore and then if you want to go to a specific place, you actually want to know like what is the direction or what exactly is the direction that we need to go or something. So, all these days before the Google, we just had like, you know, we used to ask the people like, you know, how can we go, how can we reach and all those stuff. But today, if you are there, if you have a smartphone with you, you have definitely Google Maps on it. So, obviously, you will instruct or you will search for uh, Google, in Google Maps about a destination and the pickup location, isn't it? Then it will show you from the where the point you are standing and from there, if you seek the directions to go to a specific place, it will start guiding you in terms of take left, take right, isn't it? So now, right, R-I-G-H-T, right, okay, which is correct in one context and which is to your left or to your right, getting now. This right is different than this right, isn't it? And then what is this right, R-I-T-E? Heard of this word R-I-T-E? The right, the meaning of this particular word, it is actually an adjective and when we talk here about the word like right, it is nothing but, uh, what can I say, a tradition that a specific, you know, religion follows. For example, I performed the last rites of a dead body. That is, a son or, you know, a son has to perform the last rites of a dead body. Last rite. So, what right do you think I am using out of these four here? Obviously, this adjective, isn't it? So, right, R-I-T-E means that uh, some specific uh, tradition that has been followed with respect to their own or respect respective religions. So, that is why we say this word, right. Then, on the other hand, you have one more right, W-R-I-G-H-T. Now, when we talk here about W-R-I-G-H-T, it is nothing but, it is a what? Noun. Isn't it? For example, Mr. John Wright was the Indian cricket coach. Mr. John Wright was the Indian teams or Indian cricket teams head coach. If I have to say, this is just as an example. So, which right do you think am I, am I using? So, obviously, I am going for this word here. Clear? Okay. So, right which is a verb. This right which is an adverb, this right which is an adjective and this right which is a noun. So, what is common in all these four words? It is only the pronunciation, but they differ in their meanings, they differ in their spellings. So, such words are actually called as homophones in English. Okay, let us do the second exercise or the second set of words that we have written. Sight, S-I-T-E. I have a site in Hassan. <clears throat> My father owns a site in so and so place. Which site? This one, this one or this one? Obviously this one, isn't it? Then I cite William Wordsworth's words in my answer. Site, C-I-T-E, isn't it? So citing the words, you know the word like quotes. I quote what 
William Wordsworth has said about nature. So, I am citing his example. Heard of this? No. I cite this example. I take the words from someone. I take the words from so and so poet or something. So, there you are actually taking this site. Citing an example, giving an example, taking from the original work. For example, I want to write my answer. So, when I want to write my answer, I actually cite an example of William Shakespeare's words or I take or I take some quotes from William Wordsworth's words. So, what I do? I cite. Cite can be giving or taking. Okay. Cite can be giving or taking. And what is this cite? I have very poor eyesight or my weave is called as sight. So, what is common here? Again, pronunciation or the words, isn't it? But they definitely have different meanings at the same time they have different spellings as well. So, such words are again called as homophones which I have already discussed. Now, let me come to the one more set of the words I have written pole. So, can you give me the difference between pole and pole? P-O-L-L -L and P-O-L-E. A P-O-L-L -L is nothing but it can be the elections. So, America, USA, United States of America had just finished its polls, P-O-L-L-S, where Joe Biden became the president of United States of America, isn't it? So, whom did he surpass? So, here is he surpassed Donald Trump, you all know that. So, there were polls. When you watch, uh, you know, uh, news channels, they say something about exit polls, isn't it? So, election has happened and voting is yet to begin, uh, I am sorry, the counting is yet to begin. At that time, there is, you know, in every channel, in every news channel, you say exit poll results, exit poll results. So, what is the word that they are using there? They are using this one there, isn't it? Can you use this word there? Obviously not, isn't it? Can you use that the other word there? Obviously no, isn't it? In a similar way, what do you mean by poll? A poll can be a, a poll can be a, football poll okay a poll is nothing but something which is you know uh, uh, something which has been sticked on to the ground to give some support or something okay polls are used to make the tent stand p o l e but there i cannot use the word p o l isn't it in the similar way when we talk about the words one should be very very specific and careful in identifying or choosing the words in the last class of mine, I had very clearly told you that the act of playing with the words is called as punning, P-U-N-N-I-N-G. In the similar way, if your vocabulary is good, then obviously you have a choice of playing with the different words in terms of the communication or in terms of the context that you are actually talking in. Okay. Hope I am clear with that. Okay. So, this is the definition part of the one set of the word that we have discussed that is the homophones in English. Okay? So, when we talk here about the words which are pronounced with the same way but having different meanings as well as the spellings and such words in English are called as homophones. Hope I am clear with that. So, Now, let us have along with that whenever we talk about homophones, a homonym, there is another word which is called as homonym that will also come into consideration. It is exactly like antonym synonyms, prefixes and suffixes and then homonyms and homophones. Homophones, so far we have discussed what it is. Okay, Now, let us discuss about what do you mean by a homonym. Now, what do you need to understand here is that homo means what? Same again, right? So, same, nim part of a word. Okay. Now, if I have to give you an example like, you know, write because I had already taken this example in, you know, explaining it to you, the example of a homophone, right? I gave you the four other words pertaining to the same word here. But here, right can be used in two different contexts which I have already told you. That is, you are correct. You are right in your thinking. You are right in your decision. This right you use. Go to your left and then take a right. So, you are using it the same word but in a different context or something that is right can also be used as a homonym that is what you need to understand. Let me give you one more example.
can you think of the example here that I have given bear that is look at that bear or we always talk about the polar bear in the Antarctic region isn't it so polar bear which spelling am I using this one or this one obviously this one because it is in the caps isn't it I am taking a name of an animal nothing but this is a noun okay then this becomes a verb in the other different context for example I am bearing all my children's expenses I am bearing my children expenses okay then I can't bear the tension I can't bear this weight okay I can't bear this weight it is so weighty I could say or it is very much that I cannot carry so I can't bear the tension that is given by my parents I can't bear the uh, tension whatever it is so here what you need to do here is that two things are common here the first thing is that it is having the same spelling okay but it is also having the same pronunciation but you can use it in multiple contexts with respect to the word that can be used clear so such words in English are called as homo names okay so they are called as homo names so when we are talking about communication or when we are talking about this vocabulary one should be very very specific in terms of choosing the words or else your communication will not be effective or your com entire communication will go wrong so why we are doing this exercise is because tomorrow when you are writing your examination you would be given to identify the exact choice of a word it could be a homonym it could be a homophone it could be a affix it could be a prefix it could be an antonym or it could be a synonym or so okay so first of all let us understand what is the definition if this definition is clear in your mind then it is very easy for you to identify such words whether to categorize them into all three categories which i have already discussed with you Hope I am clear with my discussion. Hope I am uh, clear with my explanation on homophones and homonyms. In homophones, what is it? In homophones, it is pronounced in a same way but with different meanings as well as the different spellings in it. And uh, coming to the homonym, the pronunciation is also same. Uh, what is that? Spelling is also same but it can be used in two different contexts. Okay, for example, draw, if I have to give you a word like draw. Okay, so draw, start doing something in the form of like, you know, I draw very nicely, something, I sketch, I drew drawing nice, something that you say, okay. Then uh, withdraw, I draw money from an ATM, so what are you going to do? getting so a word which is pronounced in the same way with the same spelling but there is a difference in the context or in the meaning and such words are actually called as the homo names or so okay so hope i'm clear with my you know explanation on two category i'm sorry the second the third category of the words that is the third category of the word which is nothing but the homo names and the homophones so having said that or having explained it to you about what exactly is the concept is all about now let us go deep into the text and understand the words that come we come across <clears throat> okay now homophones on page 52 you have been given here about certain examples of homonyms and homophones okay the first one homophones are words with similar sound but different spelling and meaning Consult a dictionary to know their meaning and use them in your own sentences. So that is what you are supposed to do. Out of it, one example I have already told you, C-I-T-E, the word sight, 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 isn't it? In a, all the first example is pronounced in the same way in all three different contexts. It also has different spelling and it also has the different meanings to it. So that's why we say it as sight, C-I-T-E, S-I-G-S-T and S-I-T-E. So, I have very clearly explained it to you. In this class, I just will give you the meaning and probably in the next class, we will do the exercises more on it. Alright. Second one, bored and bored. What is common here? The pronunciation is common. Look at the spellings. So, one word says B-O-R-E-D. 
bug up i'm i'm not interested bored i'm bored i'm feeling bored then i make use of or i write on the board hope you can understand that then steel s t e e l steel one of the metals steel okay then s t e a l steel that is someone picking it up like you know stealing it someone like you know thieves always steal something like that okay then hair and hair h a i r hair that we actually normally have in the similar way h a r e is nothing but it's one type of an animal something like related to that what is it, what do you call it? the deers isn't it something that is related to the deers that we actually find them then weather so this is the most common word that we use isn't it and most of the people will definitely have this example with their uh, explanation in the form of identifying the correct word like you know weather and weather so w e a t h e r is the climactic condition w h e a t h e r is whether you are here dilemma so that's what it means then some and some s o m e some of you s u m you use this in mathematics isn't it the sum of like you know addition so this is two words then right and right which i have already given you as an example and i gave you two more words with respect to these words here that is isn't it and one more typical example that most of us make mistake is that like you know stationary s t a t i o n e r y and n a r y <coughs> so if you want to buy a pencil or sharpener or an eraser or a textbook or notebook or whatsoever or whatsoever where do you normally go you go to stationery shop and what is the spelling what is the spelling it, it does it uh, should it end it with n e r y or should it end it with n a r y it should end with n e r y isn't it stationery shop even today most of the shops if you go and see they will have definitely written s t a t i o n a r y but stationery n a r y this is something which is earth isn't it something that doesn't move something that is idle not ideal okay idle this is something that doesn't move like for example earth in our solar system do the earth move no earth is stable it is constant isn't it in a similar way this word is something that most of us make use with their not understanding which word they are supposed to use or something okay so s t a t i o n e r y s t a t i o n a r y stationary so this is exactly an example for a homophone in english isn't it so when we talk here about these words they meant with terms of the pronunciation with the spelling and with the meaning okay so this is what exactly is an explanation on the third categories the third category form of the words under vocabulary and they are nothing but the homonyms and the homophones okay so don't get confused and see to it that you will identify the words and you will come up with some more examples okay henceforth whenever you start reading a newspaper or maybe your own textbook or whatsoever if you can remember certain words you definitely try to identify them within like whether they belong to this set of word or that set of word and also be very clear about the meaning and their usage okay the first and foremost thing that most of us every one of us need to do is that identify the part of a speech of that particular word <clears throat> identify the part of speech of that first word whatever the word that is given in a similar way you can just do it in the part of the other three categories of the word or something okay to sum up once again today we have just discussed about certain examples or just the ex explanation in terms of the examples with respect to what are homophones in english and what are homonyms in english okay so i stop my session here and probably we will do some more exercises on page number 53 and also we will learn some more uh, live examples wherein we can construct or we can make our own sentences with respect to identifying the words first and then using them in our own sentences okay that we will do it in the next class so the next page on 53 in your textbook will be done in the next class okay so thank you very much and i hope that you have understood explanation regarding what are homo
homonyms and homophones. So now you are at a point wherein you can identify the words difference between a homophone and a homonym. So keep on making some lists because it will definitely help you in identifying the words and using them at the time of requirement. Okay, you cannot say that I performed the last, the uh, you know W R I G H T S of a funeral body. You should be very specific there, isn't it? W R I G H T means it is entirely wrong. Rather, you will definitely have to write R I G H T, isn't it? In a similar way, the exit poll results were pathetic. If you are using P O L E there the whole communication is gone but rather you should be in a position to say that yes the exit poll p o l l results poll results were pathetic getting so these are just the examples that i have given you you can think of more, some more words on your own and when we discuss it in the next class we will come across it or maybe i will give you some more examples with respect to what the textbook has so that you can think in a broader way in terms of understanding homophones and homonyms. Alright, so thank you very much and I shall meet you in the next class.